Hey Digital Fan, my name is John D. Saunders, founder of 54 Digital, and you're now watching the Digital Block. Everyone, I hope all is well. We have a special guest in the house today, sports commentator, blogger, and founder of the wildly successful sports and entertainment blog, Black Sports Online, Mr. Robert Latap. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> you, you, you do, you, you're giving me too much credit out there. Uh, oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well out here in, in your area. Uh, not sunny Florida. <laughs> uh, not sunny Miami. Rainy Miami, but, you know, having a good time. Nice, nice. So, Robert, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into blogging and the digital space? Well, when I was young, um, I wanted to be a rapper. But I always had an affinity for, for journalism. Um, I was a big sports fan. I wanted to work for ESPN, do Sports Center, and all of that stuff. So I kind of had these two worlds going on. You know, I was kind of in the streets and wanted to rap, uh, but you know, I always wanted to get my education and uh, to be a journalist. So I went to a college. I went to the Ohio State University, and I majored in journalism. Like, all, but also in the back of my mind, I was like, I want to be the next Jay Z too. Okay. <laughs> so, but it was kind of like these parallel oh. words that, that, were, that were going on. Um, so what I tried to do is I tried to kind of fuse them both together, use the creativity of music and the type of journalism that I was doing, or this type of sports journalism I wanted to do. Uh, after I got out of out of college. Uh, I didn't find the, the sports jobs that I was hoping to find. Uh, the rap career didn't work out, you know, too well. Uh, but luckily for me, around that time uh, is when digital media and online media and you know the internet was really starting to explode. You know, around 2004, 2005, people were really getting online. So I thought, hey, you know, I'm not doing much of anything right now, and I had done websites in the past for like to sell my my rap CDs. So I'm like, well, why don't I start up a website, you know, about sports? Uh, and that's a way I can kind of use my degree while I'm trying to figure out what I want to yeah. do in my life. And that's kind of how Black Sports Online came about. Awesome. Awesome. So can you explain the meaning behind Black Sports Online? Because our viewers, they don't understand mm -hmm. the whole context. So can you break that down? Yeah, absolutely. Now, you have to go back in time. You have to go back to 2004, 2005. Okay. If you remember those times, there wasn't a lot in regards to online sports media. I mean, you had your ESPNs and your SI.coms, but, you know, people were still using dial-up. And what happens in the sports media, it's 90% uh, white, 90% white males. But athletes, there are a lot of African-American athletes, a lot of minority athletes that are, you know, pretty much controlling sports. So I always thought that we had a disconnect because we had athletes that were from uh, a certain culture uh, playing a sport. And then you had the people that were reporting on them that really couldn't relate uh, to their experiences. So what, what I came up with was the concept that what if, you know, you had a site where there was a black person that was running it, there was minorities that were writing about sports. Not necessarily to say that our opinion was better than the mainstream media opinion, but to at least give uh, the reader or the audience a different perspective on the athletes that we're covering. So, you know, back then it was like Randy Moss and Terrell yeah. Owens yeah. and Allen Iverson. You know, I think at that time, I was a lot younger, of course, back then. At that time, I thought I could relate better to, you know, maybe some of the issues that they were having. The concept wasn't to be separatist. It wasn't to be like, hey, you know, black against white or to yeah. protect uh, black athletes or anything like that. It was just to give like, hey, I come from a different world, and but we're working in the same genre. Uh, we're working in the same areas. Let me tell you how I see it from my world. And you can tell people how you see it from your world. At least they have, a, a, they won't be clouded just by one opinion. Got it. Okay. No, that makes sense. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you broke it down. Mm -hmm. So I guess my next question would be, or just to tell the viewers, mm -hmm. you guys get you know a quarter of a million views a month. Mm -hmm. your, your pages are expanding exponentially. How, mm -hmm. how do you constantly stay relevant? Well, I think it's not even about staying relevant. It's about staying true to the original message. Uh, while adapting to the times. You know, the original message is never strayed from that. Is that, you know, we're going to do it differently. We're going to give you different opinions. We're going to give you different stories uh, about things. And I think a lot of times the way people get off track is they're trying to be somebody else. You know, yeah, they're trying true, to be true. the next Stephen A. Smith or Skip Bayless or Chris Berman or whoever. You know, I always wanted to just be, you know, me. And, and, and I think when that comes across in our... In our writing, 
with my staff. I let them be who they are. And if you just keep, you know, not necessarily just give people what they want, but at least give them something different. You know, like everybody can, you know, I, I, anybody can say, you know, the, the Browns suck. You know, you know, it, 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 stuff like that. That's not to me like that's not reporting. Like yeah. you want something different. And I think the the reason that we're still around, even though every, a lot of things have changed over the last ten years or so, is that we've always been able to give people something a little bit different. And we change with the times. We're not stuck in our ways. You know, back when I started, you know, I was writing thousand word, you know, editorials. Uh, about Kobe Bryant and yeah. stuff like that because long form was what people were used to. Well, now we're in a bang, bang, you know, society. So, you know, hey, so maybe I got to throw in a teacher sex story every once in a while <laughs> to keep, you know, things, you know, moving uh, while still doing those editorials out there. But, you know, I understand that you have to change with with the times, uh, but you also got to stay true to yourself. Got it. Okay. And what specific ways... Did you grow your following to what it is today? I mean, for people out there that are trying to develop their blog and their content, what are some specific maybe strategies or ideas you use? Well, one of the, the main things that I, I did was I never tried to make myself bigger than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people feel like to, to gain an audience, they got to put down other people uh, or they have to act a certain way or they have to be an actor or actress and pretend to be somebody they're not. One of the things I know, for, at least for me, is that it's always been like, if I'm talking to you, it, we're all on the same level. Like, you know, I'm just writing about something. You're talking to me. We're all on the same level. When I started, you know, I got down in the dirt. You know, I got down on, on certain levels to, to talk to people, like, you know, read my stuff, talk to me about it. Uh, I never was – I like criticism. Um, I never took things too personally. That's, that's the, the main thing. You really can't. You, you, the bigger that you get, yeah. uh, the more arrows are going to come from all over. So you got to be able to duck and dodge and move. You got to be a little Ali. Absolutely. You got to show the role like Mayweather yeah. uh, uh, with a lot of the criticism. And I don't even like to call it like hate. I think a lot of times when people say, oh, I got haters, or they don't really have no haters. Like, yeah. like nobody's stalking me, so I don't think I have any haters. But to me, if you're – if people know who you are, it doesn't even matter if they like you or not. You've already succeeded in a way because the worst Absolutely. thing I um, always tell people is sometimes people don't like to take risk uh, because they want to be liked. But indifference is the worst thing that you could possibly have because right. if nobody cares about what you're saying one way or the other, then, you know, you're not making, you know, any type of, you know, mark. So, yeah, so from a just a standpoint of a, a blog or just want to start a site, you have to be consistent. You know, you can't be on five days a week and then, you know, disappear for two days. You know, true. I've been working literally three, six, you know, 24, seven, 365 for the last, you know, decade. Like wow. I don't take wow. holidays off on Thanksgiving. You're still going to get the same 20, 30, 40 posts from BSO. If I have to do them myself on Christmas, <laughs> I unwrap my gifts. My, I have a daughter. She unwraps her stuff. I build whatever I can. You know, I'm not very good with that stuff. But how I build the, the Barbie doll houses and all that. Mm -hmm. And then after that, everybody good. Work. It's back to work. You know, it doesn't matter if it's good. Game's on. You know, yeah. and, and you have to have that type of dedication and consistency uh, where people feel like, hey, I always got to check in on what's going on on BSO or with Rob because I know something is always yeah. uh, happening. And, and you don't get that unless you have the consistency. Absolutely. So consistency is key, mm -hmm. always. Um, you kind of talked about it earlier, but how do you differentiate yourself from the competition? I mean, I know there's tons of sports mm -hmm. blogs out there. You've been doing this for a decade now. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that you differentiate yourself from the competition? Well, I think I think a lot of people, they think they overthink that. You know, what can I do to be different? But everybody's different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you allow yourself to be different, you're scared to be themselves. And what happens is they end up blending in with the crowd. They, they blend in with whatever the popular take is. And I don't look at it as, you know, what's the popular take or unpopular take. I look at it as what do I think and can I back it up with, you know, some sort of, you know, facts. Now, that may not always be a, a popular, you know, opinion or maybe unpopular to some, but it's like, to me, that's what makes you stand out because now people are going to say, hey, you know, I've followed Rob for X amount of years. I know he's going to call it the way he is. And, you know, give a you-know-what yeah. about what other people, you know, think about it. He's going to do it in a concise and an intelligent way, and that's how, you know, why I want to hear what he has to say. Uh, goes back to the consistency of, of, of not being wishy-washy, mm -hmm. making sure that when you do say something, 
Yeah, all the all the time. And and so so don't overthink. Don't be like, you know, oh, I have to wear like green jackets or something. <laughs> You know, like what the, the the activist guy always wear the blue vest, the yeah. knee right yeah. Like you don't have to, ha- you don't have to have a hook. Like I don't have a hook. You know, I don't wear a hat backwards. I don't have anything that's really distinct about me besides my own personality. So let your own personality shine out, and you will automatically, you know, be different from the rest. Yeah. No, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So embrace your own your mm-hmm. own differences mm-hmm. and your character. Exactly. Got it, got it. So I guess, you know, as an aspiring blogger, let's say you have a kid coming up, he's like, hey, I want to start a blog. Mm-hmm. What should I do? Well, here's the, here's the good thing and the bad thing, the gift and the curse. It takes 30 minutes to start a sports blog, and you can literally blow up in 30 minutes. So, you know, go on WordPress, you know, get your uh, free design, go daddy, get your URL, make a post. If it's good enough, somebody might pay attention to it, and it goes great. That's not what will make you successful, though, because anybody can do that. What will make you successful as a, you say, if you're a new blogger or new to the sports media industry is having a focus and an everyday willingness to work very, very hard. Easy to start, hard to maintain. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it's so easy to start. So everybody, that's why people are like, oh, I can be, I can be. I can do what BSO does. I can do what the big lead or I can do what Deadspin does or whatever. Well, well, it's not as simple as that because you can start it up, but you don't have to do you put in the hours. You know, I get up every day at 8 a.m. and I'm probably not going to bed each day to 2 a.m. And throughout that entire day, I'm, you know, working. And, you know, that's not cool. I like to go out. You know, I want to go see the movies from time to time, but, you know, I can't do as much socially. Because it's a it's a business, and you have to look at it as a business. So my you know my advice is always you know get started. That's the, the first thing is to start. A lot of people take six months a year to do the business plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like it's it's you know it's it, it's very strange because it's it's hard work. It's not complicated. Like it's sports. Like we're all watching. You know, don't let you know the ESPN, the SI, the Yahoo. Don't let people fool you. You don't have to be a an expert to talk about, you know, sports. You can watch TV and see what sports is about and, and formulate an intelligent opinion. What those people do is that they're just on TV. So it just makes them seem like they're smarter. But a lot of times, most of the stuff they say is wrong. So <laughs> it, you're no different than them. It's just a matter of getting out there and doing it and, and, and starting. And you can all, the best thing about blogging, I think it's much different than almost any other uh, industries and blog, you can evolve as you go along. You don't have to stay with the same yeah. design. No, you don't have to stay with the same concept. You don't have to stay with the same name. You can start off doing videos and then go to print and do a podcast. You can always evolve and with the times. And oh, you can start on Twitter. Maybe you want to do a different Twitter name. You can always change different stuff, but you got to start and you got to do it every single day so you know what's working for you. And what's not working for you. And that's why also it's important to pay attention to your statistics, who's retweeting, who's Facebook sharing, so you can see what your audience, you know, likes. For a long time, I would write stuff. I would think it was great. Yeah, it wasn't getting any traction at all. Yeah. You know, it might have been great, but it wasn't connecting with my audience. And I had to see what my audience liked. And I said, you know something? They like Kim Kardashian. They like Drea. You know, they like this. some of this this fluff stuff. Oh, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to just ignore it or be hard-headed. I'm going to call up John Saunders and say, hey, give me a BSO Entertainment page because my people like that. Yeah. And I'm still going to do my sports and cover everything, but I'm going to adapt because I see what people like. And that's what, as a young person or just some anybody that's starting, pay attention to what your audience is telling you. Okay. okay. No, that's great advice. So what would you say is your greatest accomplishment so far? I think my greatest, you know, I feel my greatest accomplishment, nothing personal for me. I think my greatest accomplishment is that I've been able to help others. Um, you know, just me being able to get out of some of the situations I was in when I was younger as far as debt and dead-end jobs and getting fired and repoed and kicked out of apartments. Once I got to a stable level, that was an accomplishment for me. Like, I, I, can, I can, you know, if something happened to me tomorrow, I, I would be like, hey. I had a good life. I, I, I've been to box. I've been to Super Bowls, NBA Finals, Mayweather, Pacquiao. I've, I've done much more than what I, I thought I could ever do. But 
for me, my accomplishment is when I take someone that doesn't have a lot of experience. They're young, but they're hungry. Yeah. And, you know, if they went the traditional route, you know, they may not cover an event today they're 35 years old. You know, but I can put them in something and they're 23 and they're 24. I'm the only under 25 person here. To me, that's an accomplishment because the only way you can make a change in an industry is if you put people in positions to make that change. And one of the things that Black Sports Online has given me an opportunity to do is not, you know, just take all the glory for myself. I'm going to take about 90 percent myself, <laughs> but, you know, to give a little uh, bit back and to be able to help people. Even if it's just like with advice uh, or putting them in an opportunity or giving them a credential or giving them an outlet to write uh, and adding some some flavor to this, you know, sports media yeah, world that we're in. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So you're a huge sports fan, of course. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. um, who inspires you in the sports realm? It could be basketball, football. I mean, any sport. Who really inspires you the most? Mm, inspiration. You know, see, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've had to detach. A lot. Like, I always tell people I'm a fan of sports, but I'm not a fan of totally athletes cool. or teams or like that because you kind of have to detach. I used to be a, uh, and I still am, I guess, a big fan of Deion Sanders, the player. You know, back in the day, I used to high step when I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had the, you know, the, the prime time, and I was <laughs> I was all of that. You know, must be the money CD. Yeah. I had all of the big, big Deion Sanders fan. And then, you know, I got into the industry, then I got to meet. Deion Sanders, like meeting your idol, right? So you meet your idol, and you're like, man, it's Deion Sanders, and he's talking to me, and he's like, you know, the site's cool, and we're cool, and we're dad, you know, yeah, yeah, hugging and everything, yeah. and I'm telling my mom yeah. and my dad, I met Deion Sanders. You know, I had, the, I had all the 21 jerseys yeah. and everything. Wow. And then Deion gets a divorce, <laughs> and his wife is talking about all type of crazy stuff. Well, now I'm in a, I'm in a conundrum. You know, that's Deion Sanders. Boy, that's my yeah. boy. You know, but this is a huge, you know, news story, you know, that's going on. Like, you know, talking about cheating and beating and all of this stuff. You know, I got to write the story. And, you know, so I, you know, write the story. And I, you know, hear from D.I. Like, I'm like, hey, man, you know, it's my, you know, it's my job yeah. to do that. And, you know, kind of light went off. Like, you know, I can't, I can't be like that anymore. Like, I can have those memories. But when, you know, Dion's not paying you know, my light no, bill, course, my electric bill, you know, these guys, you know, that I, I you know, admired as, as a teenager, you know, aren't, you know, paying for my car note or my, my, my daughter's school and all of this stuff. So I have to do what I have to do. So when I look at athletes now as far as inspiration, I don't even look at them for inspiration as much as I'm curious about, like, maybe some of the things they're doing marketing-wise mm -hmm. Business wise, like I look at LeBron and how he handles his business. I look at Kobe. Kobe just started Kobe Inc. And Kobe yeah. Inc. and how he handles his business. You know, a lot of people don't like, you know, Floyd Mayweather, right? You know, for, for you know, they have valid reasons for not liking Floyd Mayweather. But I find it interesting that a guy that doesn't knock out anybody, that's a defensive fighter, that fights are, you know, more technical than mm -hmm. slugouts, um, is making $300 million, $200 million, $100 million of fighting because that's, that's business. Because he, he's, he's manipulating you in a, in a way that's deeper than, you know, this boxing. Because everybody's like, I hate, I hate, the, I hate the fight. I, had, I can't believe that. But you paid to pay for view. You got money team hats on. It, you know, his Instagram, 5 million people. You know, so he's doing something. Like, stuff like that I find more interesting about athletes than what they do on the court, you know, in the ring or, or, or whatever. Because I feel like you're... Like, I applied a lot of Jay-Z's methods to how I did, you know, BSO. So I think you can apply these type of business methods and, and things that they do off the court to, you know, my business as well. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's get back into, I guess, Black Sports Online mm -hmm. and your business. What do you think the future of digital marketing holds? I mean, as you know, the industry changes every mm -hmm. couple of months. There's a new product. There's a new feature. How do you think it's going to change in the next couple of years? Well, I, I think we're, we're in the midst of a big change because two, three, four years ago, you know, blogs like mine, we would do stories that mainstream media wouldn't touch. Tech, we would use technology that mainstream media wouldn't touch. These days, they're all over it now. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember about maybe three years ago, uh, YouTube was taking down NFL videos. Like, you try to do the highlight, they would, you know, take it down. Like, you can't yep, use I remember it. That. You remember that, right? 
So me and uh, my uh, writer at the time, that was Greg Smith. Now he, he has a, he has a radio show in Nebraska. Now we're like, man, we we're trying to get these clips up really fast to get these views, but YouTube keeps taking them down. Like we need to figure out an alternative. It's like you know what we could do. I'm like, what? Like we can go on Instagram and put the highlight on Instagram because they don't have a, a way to get into that yet to start blocking yeah. the videos. So what would happen is on NFL Sundays. You know, we had a red zone channel. We would put these videos on Instagram, and if instead of putting them on Twitter, we would put them on the site and get this huge amount of traffic because we was beating everybody by like 10, 15 minutes. Well, come to find out, you know, a year or two later, there's Vine, there's Instagram is now working with you know these companies, Snapchat. There's all these other digital ways that videos come out. Like now, the NFL do their own videos on Twitter. You know, before any anything comes up. Yeah. So it's like you have to be a half a step ahead of everybody else. Sure. Uh, I think it's going to be more digitalized, in, you know, more ways because we our technology is more advanced. I mean, that, that, that watch you have at some point is going to be like, oh, you do the watch, do the video. On the watch. Yeah, it's going to be like Inspector Gadget. Yeah, you take absolutely. your watch and do a video and up up you know, upload it to your site or to the to your social media spaces. I mean, everybody is. Is recording everything. It's so funny. I went to a, a weigh in of the Canelo and Cotto fight. Yeah. And uh, they get up on the scale, and I'm looking around, and everybody's like this. Their phones, right? Like every single body. And, you know, it, it was like two, three thousand people in there. They, everybody's up. It's like nobody embraces just the moment, the moment anymore. And unfortunately, as a, a blogger or a business person that has a website, now you have to be faster. You have to. Be on the technology before, like when Periscope came out. Like I saw the potential in that right from the beginning. So I went to the Final Four. I'm Periscoping, and I, you know, I'll tell you something. I think they stole this from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I was at the Final. The Periscope had just came out. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the Final Four as okay. soon as it came out. I'm walking around the Final Four like before the game. You know, Periscoping, just talking, and like here's the crowd, here's some yeah. of the fans. And dancing and stuff like that. And I'm periscoping after the game, giving like updates, like, you know, this is what happened. And I swear, like, like two days later, like uh, Fox uh, Sports won. All of a sudden, now they're periscoping from the Final Four. Wow. Like, wait a minute. And they probably picked it up because yeah. you know, Periscope has that geolocation. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Was that me? Now, it may have been like other people was doing yeah. They Like, hey, this is a good idea. But <laughs> before mainstream media would. It would take them like months or years to catch on. Now they're catching on in days. Yeah. So yeah. if you're an independent, you have to be on it. You know, you can't be lazy. Like I, I feel like I probably waited too long to to do the site redesign because I was more focused on content and stuff like that. And maybe I'm behind a little, you know, others. But you live and learn. And then one of the things now I can say, hey, you know, if you see digital, mobile, whatever, whatever it is that's coming out, get on it. You know, get your, you know, MacBook, your iPhone, whatever it is, get on it quickly uh, because the new, the next new thing is coming and then they're going to take what you did, you know, five minutes before. So just keep, you know, kind of, you know, revolving around the new technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess my last question for you would be, I know you got a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. I want to get you out of here. Um, it would probably be, what is the future for BSO? Where do you guys see yourselves in ten years? Mm -hmm. What's the end goal? Well, well, my future is retirement. Okay. Now, when I say <laughs> now, when I say retirement, I don't, I don't mean it in the traditional way. Like I'm going to retire and then you never hear from me again. I'm always going to be connected to, to BSO. It's my brand. It's it's my baby. But I think the work that I've done over these last ten years um, has allowed BSO to become a type of property that. I'm not as important uh, singularly. When I started, it was me and BSO. We were like this, like the Wonder Twins. We were connected. And everything I did was about branding myself and branding, you know, BSO to get to a certain, you know, level. And I had to put myself out there to do that. I had to be expressive. I had to go to everything that I could go to. Uh, I had to write, you know, 25,000, you know, posts yeah. to do that. I, and I think now, you know, as we go on into, you know, 2016, I think the brand is strong. You know, the, you know, the traffic, you know, traffic, I always tell you, don't get overly excited about traffic up and down because it's always going to go up and down. Yeah. Your brand 
is what is going to determine your credibility and things like that as you go forward. I think the BSO brand is strong and getting stronger enough that I can make not the next Robert Latow, but the first Kale Dansby, the first Glenn Irby, the, the first, you know, Natasha Paul, a Tamantha Gunn, all of these people that I have working for me now, that they can branch out and become their own little mini social celebrities or, or whatever you want to call it yeah. now. And that's what I want to do. I want to, you know, sit back and I want to let them experience all the things that I got to experience, but without all the, the, the heartache <laughs> and, and all the struggle and stuff. So Using you, know, you as a stepping stone to develop to, their Right, their to brand. develop them. And then they can go... And whatever their you know goals are, they will have B. They will always have BSL. But if they want to go and do bigger things uh, outside of that, now they have that foundation where they can walk into an ESPN office and they say, "Well, what have you done?" They say, "Well, you know, I've I've covered the ESPYS, I've covered you know NBA finals, I covered the biggest UFC pay per view that it's ever had. I'm 26 years old. Now you know you 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 don't." Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, yeah, that guy has a resume and he's been doing copy editing, you know, at a local newspaper, you know, for the past five years. I've done practical experience, you know, work. So that's where I see, you know, in the next five or ten years, me stepping back away from the spotlight. It's been gradually happening, you know, anyway. And giving more spotlight to other people, bringing more people on to the BSO family, giving them opportunities to branch out. Uh, themselves and letting BSO stand as a, a standalone. You know, it doesn't need me anymore to you know put everything on my shoulders. Uh, it's time to spread the wealth, uh, so to speak, so I can go and hang out at the beaches more. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, Robert, I, I appreciate you Ooh. coming in. Feel free to plug the website blacksportsonline.com. Tons of views, consistent Ooh. content on a daily basis. Robert, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so you much. you have anything to say to the... Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, check out Black Sports Online. And, hey, this guy, best best web designer <laughs> of all time. What you're seeing right now, Black Sports Online, that's all him. I, I couldn't do any of that. I started on Yahoo Geo City. See, I know nothing. <laughs> These guys did stuff to the site that I, I didn't even know was possible. The new so, site is coming soon, so yeah, watch out for it. Yeah, so when you see that... That's this guy right here. When the new site comes soon, that's this guy that, that did it all for you. So check out you know Black Sports Online on Twitter at BSO, uh, on Instagram and Facebook, Black Sports Online. If you're looking out for the new podcast, the Drip Drop Hour is coming soon to a podcast <laughs> near you. Yes, like Haki, you know, Drip Drop, <laughs> Drip Drip and Drop. Yeah, my, dad, my old school dad. See, I'm dad. See, I'm old school dad. Shoulder link. See, I'm shoulder link. Oh, <laughs> Thank you guys for viewing uh, the digital block, and we'll see you next week. Peace.